Dr. Sierra. I am a reproductive endocrinology and infertility specialist working here in a fertility center in Toronto. So when a patient is first referred, the referral often comes from the family physician or the obstetrician gynecologist who's been seeing the patient and identifies a delay to conceive. And that could be a delay of over a year in somebody who's young and healthy, or it could be shorter than a year in somebody who's older or who has other gynecological issues that can lead to infertility. Once a referral is made, we do our very best to see uh, the patient or the couple within six to eight weeks. Some referrals take longer depending on the uh, availability of physicians, such as recurrent early pregnancy loss might take a little bit longer than eight weeks to be seen. Um, and sometimes social egg freezing where intake is done often by a nurse to start might be even quicker. So it always starts with a consultation uh, where a history is reviewed, including um, a reproductive history, uh, gynecologic history, menstrual history, um, general health and well-being, surgical, etc. Family history I mentioned is really important when it comes to fertility because there can be uh, certain conditions that are more predisposed in certain families that might have impact on fertility. Another important part of the history intake is the partner. So mostly we work with uh, patients who identify as female, uh, but the male uh, partner is also extremely important and can make up about 45% of the reason that we see um, patients and couples for infertility. So again, taking a male reproductive history is important, general health and well-being, and I didn't mention before, but lifestyle is very important for both as well. The other benefit for the consultation is that, you know, we are seeing these patients at the time when they're contemplating pregnancy and not yet pregnant. So again, that lifestyle bit's really important, not just to get a history, but also to provide some important counseling around uh, behaviors that might have uh, impact on your reproduction. So once a full history is taken, then we have a conversation if there's any risk factors identified. I think most of the time we see patients and couples around at least 50% of the time, there aren't any risk factors, um, or it might be just a case of advancing maternal age. So in those cases, we just initiate a general workup for infertility. What that looks like is looking at markers of general health and well-being, so uh, hemoglobin level, uh, iron level, I do think vitamin D is an important factor as well, so that's typically ordered. Um, so we start big picture and then move more specific. So more specific would be doing tests around ovarian function um, in, the, in the partner with ovaries, and that includes looking at day three functioning, the follicle stimulating hormone level um, in comparison to estrogen level. Uh, we also do anti-malarian hormone, which is a reflection as to how much uh, reproductive potential is in your ovary and is sort of a, a soft marker as to how many follicles are present in the ovary, which is another important part. We do an antral follicle count with ultrasound as part of initial fertility workup as well. We also check tubal status, so we wanna make sure that the fallopian tubes are open and communicating between the uterine body and uh, the ovary. So that's the important part, and we do that with a 3D ultrasound and a sonohistogram with saline infusion, which demonstrates that patency nicely. Um, and then finally, we do a sperm test uh, to look at um, count, motility, structure, and function of the sperm. Um, and that's the pretty general fertility workup. Um, it usually takes about a cycle to complete all those investigations, and then with the completion of follow-up, appointment is usually um, given. So from initial consult to doing the investigations and then the follow-up appointment, I would say it's typically about six weeks. Um, on review of the results, if there are any things that we identify that would be amenable to treatment, then that's initiated. For instance, if there's a structural concern, we make a referral as appropriate to um, to have that corrected. For instance, polyps, fibroids, um, septums, those kinds of things. Um, if there's an endocrine issue, 
and that's also uh, corrected, such as thyroid function or uh, glycemic control. Um, but again, as I said, about 50% of the time we don't find anything wrong, and then we initiate treatment.